In this lesson, we will talk about how to use automation in the rhizome. There are two types of automation, real-time automation and step-by-step -step automation. I previously loaded a song with a pattern in it. I'm going to modify some of the sounds. First, I would like to add a modulation to the mini monster, which is being used for bass. I set it to solo in my sequencer. I will switch to my mixer interface. As you can see, the mini monster signal is modulated. I want to add a modulation to this parameter. You can do this to all parameters. All I have to do is push Alt, then push once the yellow button indicates the automation is playing. If I repeat the same operation, red indicates the automation will be recorded. I can repeat the operation once more. Gray will indicate the automation is disabled. I'm doing it once more this time, and I will let it play. We are going to see how to edit it directly without saving it. I add my automation. I will now go edit this modulation. To do so, I have a dedicated window for this function. First, I will change the size of the display. I will then change the range to go change the loop length. As you can see, I now have a one-step size loop. I will remodify the size of the display. And now we can see the step being played all over the automation. What I want to do is go and add automation points. It's simple. I push Alt once more and push one of the encoders. As you can see, I added three automation points. All I have to do now is select them directly and edit their value. Since we have a one-to-one -one range, the length changes every bar. We can also have a refined value allowing us to have full control when editing each point. We can also do it without interpolizations. As you can see here, we have an increment effect. We can also use these automations to make LFOs. For example, I will select this point here, and I will change this value to zero. I previously changed my loop. It sounds like an LFO. Shorten my loop further and also change the interpolation again for all my mix. You can hear the LFO effect on my mix. If we go back to the mixer environment, we can also see that the fader is moving at the same time as the automation. I want to turn off this automation. I push Alt and the indicator dot turns gray. Even if it is red, it doesn't affect the sound. I will now go back to the Mini Monster, and this time I will record the modulation on one of my Mini Monster's VST parameters. To do so, I select the Mini Monster and I set it to Solo. I select the VST Parameters tab and I can now change the cutoff frequency. I would like to add an automation on this parameter. I just add the automation directly. This time, the indicator dot turns red. It is now set to record. I will start playing and change my automation all the way through my pattern. The 
newly created automation automatically has the length of the pattern. Now, just as previously shown, I can go edit the points I just recorded. Here I can change the zoom again, and you can see the cutoff is increasing. Just like we did previously, we can directly look for a point and change its value. I can also directly delete it. Every selected point can be completely destroyed at any time, or I can add new ones. I can change their value or change my loop endpoints. Again, we can easily imagine that by putting a really short loop endpoint, it can be used as an LFO. I will now change my timing. This is how to use real-time automation.